Amen. Amen. This morning, we're going to be talking about the posture of sonship. The posture of sonship. Um, last month, we was dealing with uh, creativity and strategies on how to influence and engage culture. Um, this month, we're going to be dealing with the posture of sonship. And I believe that as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, we are called to partner uh, not only with God, but also with each other for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And as an apostle, God deals with me prophetically in a vein of building. And building, it, just, it, it transcends just physicality, but it's also spiritually. And one thing that I see is that the church is in an amazing state because the harvest is plenty. But I believe that the, the, the actual operation of the church, God is trying to transcend us from division uh, uh, or denomination to uniting and connecting for the sole purpose of God getting the glory. Uh, but in order for this to happen, um, unified, uni in order this, for this to happen, we have to be unified not only naturally and spiritually because years I've, I've heard the message of unity being preached and it looks good on Sunday, but the rest of the week there's no unity. And I believe this is like this because in order for the church to truly unify, we have to do it spiritually from our original identity that has been given back to us through the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And therefore, for us to truly unify, it has to be in the posture of sonship. It has to be. Um, now, the word sonship, it, it simply means the act of being a son. And son has no gender, right? Um, son is male, female. It's not gender related when we're speaking to uh, the kingdom or heaven. Um, as a matter of fact, the word son in the, in the kingdom is a title of description that describes our relationship with the Father. Throughout the New Testament, mankind, even the chosen children of Israel, when they looked to God, they only seen the Messiah, the Most High. They didn't know him as Father. Why? Because sin interrupted the posture of mankind from being sons to just being servants. So what ended up happening is Jesus had to come and Jesus, he, the cross, it destroyed the works of sin or the punishment of sin, which is death, eternal death, eternal separation from God. So what happened was God took the righteousness of his son and put it on us but took our punishment and put it on him. This is why throughout the Gospels, when Jesus referred to God, he referred to him as Father. Except when he was on the cross. He looked up and he said, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Because at that moment, he took on the sins, the punishment of sin from the world. In other words, God forsaken his own son in order to receive us. So when we receive Jesus Christ, and we receive the spirit of God. This is why one title of the Holy Ghost is the spirit of adoption. At that moment, you're ushered from just being a human being to being a son, an heir by God, a joint heir with Christ. Amen. And in order for us to truly make an impact in this world, which we're called to dominate, have dominion, we must renew our mind from the flesh, which was our fallen identity, to the spirit, which is our kingdom identity. This is why when Paul speaks of the spirit versus the flesh, see, Jesus, when he spoke, he spoke in order for things to be revealed. He made it plain, but it's not plain for those who are not his. So when the apostles begin to speak kingdom, they don't necessarily just say kingdom, right? 
I believe when Paul was saying things like the spirit, the flesh wars against the spirit, he's saying your true identity is your spirit, which is a kingdom identity. So this kingdom identity is going to war with your fleshly fallen nature, which opposes each other. So this is why in the body of Christ we see so much division because we're in the flesh. We're approaching vision, doctrine, purpose, destiny from the flesh. So it becomes individualized and not corporately engaged. Y'all understand? So in this series, uh, we're going to be dissecting the posture of man before the fall and also the posture that we're supposed to be in after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. And I promise you, when that's revealed and received, we will find out that a lot of things that are tragic to us, hard to us, is simply easy as one, two, three, A, B, C. Amen. Because we do have an authority that we walk in, but it has to be walked in the posture of a son. Somebody say, I'm a son. Don't be afraid to say it if you're a female. I'm a son. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is when gender, tra- see, in the kingdom, gender transcend, transcends what the world deems as gender. Well, why do we have different roles? Because we're dealing with a kingdom, we're dealing with a government. Right. He has ordained different people to operate in different ways, whether it's male, female, whether it's elder, um, bishop, apostle. All of that is descriptive of your activity in the earth. It's not your identity. And when people get caught up on titles, that shows that at, their, at that very moment they are in the flesh. Because a title is not your identity. It's the description of your activity. Man, this is good. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a residential home builder slash renovator. That's descriptive of what I do, but it's not Ryan Davis. Got me? So as an apostle, that's descriptive of my call, right? But my identity is a son. So don't get, this is why people call themselves things that they haven't been called to do. And they're not affected, right? If you're not a prophet, don't say I'm a prophet because it's popular to be a prophet. Right? 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 Because with the Holy Ghost in you, you have every element in you working and however God want to use you. But, but God, and some of us, thank you, Holy Spirit, are not called to operate in the facility. A lot of us try to come in here and operate and miss operating out there and wonder why our life is screwed up. Because you're not in the right lane. And the body of Christ suffers from this because what I need from you, I can't get because you're trying to do what somebody else is doing. It's time for the body of Christ to get comfortable in their call and in their position. If you call to wash the dishes, you're still a son. The pastor is no greater. As a matter of fact, those who are greatest in the kingdom are the least, are the ones who serve the most. Amen. Amen. So you got to be careful when you want to be a leader. Because the carnal church has taken leadership and made it grand when our, our, our chief apostle, Jesus Christ, said plainly, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. This is why he told Peter, if I can't wash your feet, you ain't fit to be my disciple. In other words, if I can't serve you, you can't eat from my table. What kind of king comes from heaven and die for you? See, we, we look at this thing religiously and we don't look at it as being a government authority governing the affairs of the earth. You're so important to God he, in, 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 that he called you to govern something in the earth. This is why our thing for this year is occupy, do business until he comes. Amen. Right? Every one of us got a ministry. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 
Every one of us are called to build something. Every one of us are called to do something. Everyone. And the traditional age of the church is dismissing because the young people are looking for change. They're looking for demonstration. They're tired, of, they tired of people preaching to them, telling them fairy tales, and don't want to be real, that I'm toe up from the flow up like you, and if, it's not, if it wasn't for grace on my life, I could not operate. I'm no better than you. I'm not a god. I am a man that's called to do a kingdom work. And if you will partner with me, we can do this work together. This is what this age is looking for. A work. Jesus said this here plainly. He said, if you don't believe me, believe the work I do. Amen. Amen. He let the world know that before they can see me, sometime they need to see my authority. We want people to receive us without doing the work. Come on, let's get in this word. 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 Verse 15. Watch this. The Lord took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. Now watch this. This shows you don't have the right to your call. God did. In other words, Pastor Al, you can't tell God what you're called to do. He tells you. This speaks to purpose. He didn't choose Eden. God did. He took the man and planted him there for a purpose. So that shows if you're living today, you've been called to make an impact today. If you're in Mobile right now, you've been called here in Mobile to make an impact, not to sit. Not to be stagnant, but to develop your ministry. Now, your ministry, may, your ministry, if, see, in the kingdom, we're so unique and different, but we're, the, we're supposed to have the same mind. That's right. Amen. Your ministry may not look like my ministry. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Whether you're called to two on your job or somebody else called to 2,000, mm-hmm. your work is no smaller than their work. Because purpose and destiny and success is simply being in the will of God. That's it. We got to not conform our minds to this age and make this age tell us what's relevant and what's valuable. But we must look in the scriptures and see what's valuable to God and make that valuable to us. Right? So he placed them in the Garden of Eden. Now, God will never place you somewhere without giving you something to do. Because he chose the place where the man's supposed to be, and he, called, he told him to work it and watch over it. This deals with stewardship, right? Stewardship in the kingdom means you take God's property, God's stuff, you watch it and you work it. Last week we talked about the, the, the ten servants and how they was given one mina, and they took that and they multiplied it. That's showing what we're supposed to be doing. Somebody say, watch it, watch it. and work it. work it. What are we working? Mm-hmm. What are we building? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Or are we so distracted by the cares of the world? Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Yeah. You don't need a breakthrough. You are a breakthrough. People been teaching us, you come here to get a breakthrough. No, we come here to get strategy, to get innovation, to build off each other and get creative. I don't care what church you belong to. You belong to the kingdom of God. It's time for us to see ourselves as greatness. Children of the Most High. He wore a crown of thorns so you can wear a crown of gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. And the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for on that day you will eat from it, you will surely die. Now, as I was in Study. 
I began to read the commentary of Kenneth Matthews of Genesis, and he said something that was so profound. He said, freedom has no meaning without prohibition. In other words, true freedom is not freedom without boundaries. Amen. A community with no boundaries is not free at all. It's chaotic. See that? And this speaks to the nature of God because he's just. He's so just that he had to be true. Because if he would have gave them him freedom to eat without prohibiting something he can't eat from, then that's not freedom. In other words, there's no such thing as day if there was never night. Amen? Amen. Just like there has to be punishment for sin. Because he's just. He could, you could disobey and not be punished. So you have a just God but loves you un so unconditionally that he had to, something had to take on your punishment. But he loved you so much he didn't want you to die. But because he's just, something had to be done because you crossed the boundary. He started with blood. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but Adam and Eve, after they sinned, they sowed fig leaves together to hide their nakedness, but they still hid. So we understand that their nakedness had nothing to do with their body. It was their mindset because they still hid. See, sin diminishes your freedom so much that you hide from your purpose and destiny. But God is so graceful, it said he took an animal, killed it, and covered them. At the very moment of that fall, God still covered them. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself. There's no freedom without prohibition. Look at that. Verse 16. He said, and the Lord God commanded the man, you are, what that say? Free. He couldn't be free to eat if God didn't tell him he can't eat something. And this answered my question for years. I'm like, why would God put something there to tempt man? Because he's just. Evil had to be somewhere. So he put it in a tree. And he couldn't hide it from him because true freedom is not being controlled. This is why a lot of us are in bondage now because we're spiritually being controlled. True freedom is presenting and letting you make the decision to continue to walk in freedom. Yeah, you got that? I hope that answers something because I don't know if y'all may have been like me. I wanted to know that for years. But you got to look at the just nature of God. Amen. Amen. This is why this country is getting farther and farther away from freedom. Because we're embracing more and more and more against the standard of what freedom represents. Amen. Amen. Where there's no boundaries, there's no freedom. That's chaos. And where there's control at, there's no freedom. It's witchcraft. That's why the Bible said train up your child in the way that they should go. So even with our children, we got to be in tune with Holy Spirit, what's on their life. Amen. I want my son to go to college, get his bachelor's, go on to get his doctrine. But get what he told me. Dad, I'm not interested in school. I like what you do. And the worst thing I could do is force him, right? So what I told him, look, you in 11th grade, boy. You know what we told you, your boy. You need to graduate. And after you graduate, I'm going to show you how to get that bread. I'm going to show you how to get a trade. Because I had to realize he gets his way of learning from me. More visual and demonstrative learning versus lectural learning. Mm -hmm. 
It's boring to him. So I got to train him up based on the gifts that's on his life. Because a lot of times we can take a child's activity and we demonize it, not understanding that we're just supposed to steward that activity so it can be beneficial to the kingdom of God. In the way that they, somebody saying the way that they should go. Not the way that you want them to go. But you were hard head too. You ain't do nothing mama said and look at you. The good, the bad, and ugly still show the glory of God. So let's steward. See, I'm, as an apostle, I'm called to steward, not to control. This is why I'd be so much confused by the way I operate, because I'm not going to call you on the phone to tell you that something that Holy Spirit should be telling you in the first place. My job to present the vision, right? And you go pray. Not to control you. That stuff getting tore up in the spirit, man. All that religion and controlling. And, and people will call it rebellion. It ain't rebellion as I'm tired. The coronavirus shifted my mind and it hurt me so much because we had so many people in the pulpit spitting authority, binding and loosing, taking authority over sickness and disease. And soon as it hit, everybody hide. Because we're trying to save this. But Paul said, though my outer man perish, man, my inner man is being renewed day by day. I'm not scared of death. I'm not scared of calamity. If God send you, it's time to go. But we don't want resistance. Why? Because we are not operating in our true identity. Because our true identity is like David. How dare you defy the armies of God? You uncircumcised Philistine. Say it's time to walk in authority. I sense some spiritually in him, man. It's time to walk. There's an impartation being made right now, and I prophesy in the name of Jesus that every place that you've been stagnant, every place where sin has taken dominion over your life is being broken right now in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is in you. Authority is in you. Power is in you. Influence is in you. Take up your cross and go out and occupy. Who am I talking to in this place? The enemy has messed up because you are in the earth, and God say, I've anointed you to occupy. Oh, Jesus. Cry, dry your tears, mama. Dry your tears, king. Get on a mission. Go out and get what belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. Every place of burden is being dismantled right now. In the name of Jesus. Every enemy, every imp, every witch, every warlock that the enemy has sent on assignment to disrupt your vision. Every sin that has connected itself to your life. Because we're sin abound, grace much more abound. And God has put a principle of grace to cover you as son. Go out and get what belongs to you. I prophesy that. I prophesy it'd be a stirring. I ain't prophesying no home, no cars, no clothes. I ain't, uh uh. I'm prophesying a stirring in you. I'm prophesying a mindset in you. I'm prophesying change in your heart. I'm prophesying releasing the spirit. Hallelujah. Take authority over the enemy this morning. Yes, Lord. You've been called to dominate. Say, I've been called in dominion. I've been called in dominion. Hallelujah. You literally got the authority to wake up and, and command every demon to get under your feet. That's the authority you walk in. Why? Because heaven is backing you. And heaven is backing you by his word. This is why we are supposed to study daily. Not so we can be justified. We're justified by Christ. But we study so we can know what heaven is saying for this time. And he can bring the rhema of the word and give you instructions and give you strategy and give you creativity to go out and win the loss. This day and age of emotionalism is being ushered out the church. And this is why a lot of people are uncomfortable. Because God is pulling, God is pulling on your spirit. And as he pulls on your spirit, your flesh hurt. Your flesh is warring against your spirit. This is why Paul said, there's a war in my members. Stop condemning yourself. Your flesh is screaming because your spirit is coming out. You're going to fall along this here. Well, Pastor, yeah, I come to tell the truth. You're going to fall. Guess what? But you're going to get up. You're going to make mistakes, but you're going to get back on track. Yeah, that's going to happen. Stop tripping off that. 
Look at your purpose and your destiny. See, oh, I feel a Holy Spirit. Some of you have been condemned so long that you're scared to do anything because every time you do something, somebody's condemning you. But the Lord said, I'm freeing you this morning from the thoughts of man. Put your mind on things above. God said, I got angels cheering you on. The Holy Ghost is in you, pulling you on, giving you strength. And me, myself, and my son, we're in heaven. And we're saying, go, my child. Go, my child. Do what I've called you to do. The enemy mad, man. The enemy mad. That's why some of you right now, you come in, you came in here heaven because the enemy mad. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't unleash the, the, the kingdom of darkness into everything that you touch. But let me show you something. He's under your feet. The only way that he can attack you is if you yield your thoughts and yield your mind to him. But if you continue to renew your mind in this word of God, nothing in hell can stop what God got on your life. But I messed up, pastor. But guess what? The gifts of cause are without repentance. Who am I talking to up in here? I messed up too. Hallelujah. Probably mess up tomorrow. <laughs> see, we, 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 see, see, the church want to focus on the sex sin, which is a sin, and, 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 and all this stuff here, and lying and she, that's a sin. But what about unbelief? Come on. What about unbelief? Do you believe God? Do you believe that He is? Yes, sir. And he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Do you believe that he shall do exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly above all? You can ask or think according to the power, not in heaven, but that's working in you. Do you really believe that I've been young and not old and never have I seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging bread? Do you believe that he shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus? Or do you believe the messenger from Satan sent to buffet you? Who do you believe? Do you believe the report of the Lord or the report of Man being used by Satan. Many know of you, but only a few know you. You cannot allow those who know of you to stop the destiny that's in you for those who know you. I dealt with that so many years, and I sat back and wondered why people don't see me. I mean, Lord, all this right here, I'm not an evil man. I, and you know what? I was in my car ride, and the Lord said, why are you paying attention to it? Your mind's supposed to be on things above. If your mind is on things above, I ain't got time for what's around me, what's behind me, because I'm looking up, not even what's ahead of me, because he said, take no thought for tomorrow. I'm occupying right now, today, and I'm allowing my present posture to influence my present state. Write that down. Make it personal. Say, my present posture is affecting my present state. From this day forward. Because I'm kingdom. Write that down. Hallelujah. The body of Christ is in transition. And it's good. It's an amazing transition. It's an amazing transition, man. Amazing. Man, what I see for Mobile, Alabama is so amazing, man. I see some amazing things, man. Amazing. I see those with no education being influential in the marketplace. I see those with messed up past being influential in the sanctuaries. I see those who didn't know a way, God raising them up to show the way. I see it just as plainly. Hallelujah. I see hospitals being influenced by medical assistants and nurses that went to church on Sunday and got up on Monday morning and took that message into the break room and people getting saved. I see something so authentic and original that people not going to be able to put their eyes on it and know what it is. And you are a part of that because you are the remnant. Stop looking at the glass half empty. Look at it half full. Man, if you can see what I see, it's beauty in ashes. Watch this. Watch this. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Now, this got me here because everything that God created he said it was good. Hey, created, look back and say it was good. Created, look back and until he seen man by himself. He 
created a man. And the man was good. He didn't say the man was not good. He said the man being alone is not good. Right? Because what God had called them to do, God knew he needed assisting. But not any type of assisting. That's good now. You know, this, this is why if you kingdom, if you kingdom, you got to partner with kingdom people. And we ain't going to go there, but you know, Paul said, we ain't going to go there because Paul said, spiritual people can't conversate with on spiritual people. Because what you say is foolish to them. They would never, have you ever talked to somebody and they go like over their head? Very simple. When I read the parables, I'm like, why they couldn't understand that? Very simple, but don't get it. You have met somebody like Because they're not kingdom. Stop wasting your energy and time with people that are not kingdom. Just show them the way. Outside of that, I can't do nothing with you. When Paul said, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers, he wasn't talking about the world. He was talking about people in the church. So that means there are people in the church that do not believe what they don't believe, the kingdom of God. The Lord said it was not good for the man. I will make a helper corresponding to him. Hmm. Very powerful. Very powerful. Because when you go to uh, verse 20, it says the same thing. But for the man, no helper was found corresponding to him. And when I begin to look up that word corresponding, it means somebody that was in alignment with him, compatible to him. And this compatibility was not of the flesh. It was of the spirit. Right? Now, the word helper or help me and this is very good, it means one who assists. One who assists and serves another what is needed. Shock me. That word help me didn't agree. That's what it means. The one who assists and serves with what's needed. What's needed for what? What God called him to do. Not just helping, assisting, and serving with anything, but with what's needed. See, many people can serve, but everybody can't serve you with what's needed for your assignment. See? So, so here's what the Bible is saying. God was going to give him somebody that's corresponding with him because she came from him. She's in alignment with him. She's in a, 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 a posture that's compatible with him. And she's been called to him to assist and serve him with what's needed to carry out the assignment God had given him in verse 15 and 16. This is why if you're a man, if a kingdom man gets with a kingdom woman, there's so much friction. Because if you're a kingdom man, you're in your assignment and you're building, but she can't help and assist you with what you need to build. In the flesh, she's assisting, but spiritually, she can't touch you. And if a kingdom woman gets with a carnal man, she feels unfulfilled because she's supposed to be moving and doing and helping with things that he needs, but he don't want to receive what she's giving him because she, he's not walking in purpose. This is why so much divorce in the body of Christ, because there's an imbalance, because nobody's teaching you to sit down and ask the hard questions. Can you help me notice the, see, we, man, my God from heaven. See, we have gotten so carnal in the body of Christ that we take the titles and the roles of man and woman and we define that like the culture say define it. When actuality, the man is more of a servant to the woman than the woman is with a man. 
Because in the kingdom of God, those that are in headship serves. That's why God said, husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. And why submit thyself to thy heaven? The Bible never told the woman to love him. Women being more emotional than men does not signify that they're lower than men. That's just the posture that God gave them for nourishment. So I don't want you to love him because you're going to make that love emotional. I need you to submit. Submission don't mean come under. Submission means get on. Because as the man, I'm the foundation. I get lower. But the world comes in the church and want to define the role of a man as being or having authority. Watch this. This authority over in the world looks like control. Dictatorship. But this authority in the kingdom means I'm taking on the burden so the woman don't have to take it on. If you're a woman in here, you're a queen. If your man say, I don't want you to work, that don't mean you're less than. That means I want to serve you. I don't want you out here doing hard work. So much of gender offense is in the church because we're not internalizing the, 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 the definitions of man and woman from the kingdom. We're doing it from the world. Mm. Women like, I can do whatever a man do. No, you can't. Like that. Come on. You can't give a seed. <laughs> and we can't birth a seed. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got to stop conforming to this world. Because the world tells you that the position of a man is supposed to rule over. When the position of a man is supposed to serve the home. That's what covering is. I'm going to let everything hit me and it don't hit nothing. If it's raining and you under a cover and everything around you wet, but under that covering it's dry. So if you under the covering of your husband, he getting wet while you dry. But if you're not a kingdom woman, you're going to buck against the covering because you're going to think that he's saying he's ruling over you. I'm not ruling over you. I'm protecting you. covering you. I'm keeping you from harm and danger. Look at this. Watch this. Then the Lord God said it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper. He, be, he, he prophesied that because he didn't do it yet. You know why he didn't do it? Because Adam had to be doing something in order for her to help him with. See, this is why young ladies, you do not Connect yourself with a man that ain't doing that, hoping when we get married, he'll do something. We're talking about the posture of sonship here. This is, this is what sons, this is how this looks. When God gave me, God, he ain't told me to do it yet, but I'm going to do a conference called 2 and 31. The man in Genesis 2 and the woman in Proverbs 31. See, Look at, look at Adam's posture before the fall. God said, do, and he did. See, we ain't got to go deep. Kingdom-minded people wait on God to give assignments, and they go carry it out. Simple. And faith causes them to not look at the world and how the world do, but just obey. Jesus demonstrated this with Peter. When Peter was coming back from fishing, he said, hey, go back out. But we ain't caught nothing. I'm a fisherman. I've been fishing all night. And see, it's daytime. See, if you do your history, fishermen didn't fish in the daytime because the fish are swimming around the nets. They swim at night. They fish that night so they can catch them. Now, it's morning time, and Jesus said, go back out, and they caught more fish. What is that saying? When Jesus give a word, even the culture of the world cannot stop what that word said manifest. His word would never return back to him, boy, but it shall accomplish everything it been sent to do. This is why when Jesus told Peter to come, he stepped out on come. He didn't walk on water, but he walked on the word. That men preach, he walked on water. He didn't walk on water. He walked on the word. That's, see, it never stopped storming. The waves never stopped crashing, but he was floating. Why did he float on waves? Because he was floating on the word. 
It's only when he took his eyes off the word that he sunk. Look at him. Look at him. God prophesied. He said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper corresponding to him. Let me know it. To him. Corresponding to him. This is why so many of our queens are frustrated. Frustrated. Because they want to they be corresponding to kings. But the systematic oppression and systematic things that the enemy got going on is designed to take kings out of the home. And if we continue to sit here in the church, we need people studying law. We need preachers preaching in the street again. We need men of God to stop fighting over a pulpit and go to these jails and these youth centers and tell these men and these young boys that they're kings. Because we got to engage and invade the systematic oppression that the enemy this ain't a color thing, it's a light and darkness thing. Yes. You see? It said, then the Lord God formed out of the ground every wild animal and every bird of the sky and brought each, watch this, to the man to see what he would call it. Why did God bring the animals to the man? Because he told him to have dominion over everything in the earth. And if God would have named it, God would have took away his authority because biblically when someone gives something a name, that means that they have, they have the authority over it. Now, authority does not mean to dictate, but to steward. I got the authority to steward. So if, if, if God had made me an authority figure in this church, that don't mean, oh, I'm Chief Apostle Ryan Davis and everybody do what I say. No, I got authority to manage, govern, and steward the gifts, the cause, the operation of the body of Christ that's called to me. And guess what? I'm, I'm supposed to be in a lower posture than everybody. Amen. That's why when I'm up here on my hands and knees, I put my music on and I work. And I work. Because I'm serving. I'm building. I'm working. And I want it comfortable when people come in to the best of my ability. Right? Because yeah. I'm the head. That don't mean I pull up in my jag in the back seat, Pastor Al driving, and I get out and Pastor uh, 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 Dare open the door, and 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 and, and, and I'm and, 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 and got my umbrella over my head because it's shine because because the the sun's shining so hard, and, and and every time I'm sweating, Pastor Al come wipe my sweat off my face. Man, don't wipe no sweat off my face. That don't look right. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was his name. Yes. See, God has placed stuff in the earth for you to give it a name. Amen. But we ain't saying that. Mm -hmm. Or we saying stuff and saying the wrong thing. God shows you, gives you provision, and you go build it. But without no activity, there's no provision because we, we, we operate from the opposite of faith sometimes. We want to see it before we believe it. But when God told Abraham, go and I will show. Well, I don't see that because you ain't going nowhere. You go and he'll show. That's faith. Look, look, look at the disciples. The Bible say after they came in with the fish, Jesus, Peter, knelt down and went to worshiping him. And they got up and the Bible say they left all, even the fish they caught. Biggest liquor they like, they left it. Why? Because faith hit them. Faith. I don't want you to fish no more, make you a fish of me. My question is, see, some of them, well, what that mean? We, we want no detail. What, what, what that mean? What that look like? What are you talking about? We need a plan right here. I mean, you want me to go? We need you tell me, because I'm leaving. Hey, you want me to leave this lit? Asking too, asking too much, wasting time. This, this God, go. 
He got you. Go. I don't know who I'm talking to. Go. And look, very simple this morning. Go. Go and you'll grow. Go. Go. Just go. Just step out. Just go. Yeah, you're going to look foolish. Go. Yeah, they're going to talk. See, whenever innovation is present, people don't understand because they've never seen it before. Right? If, you, if you're going to be innovative, right? If you're going to be a trendsetter, you're going to have resistance. People are going to call you crazy. Look how Noah, you wonder how Noah looked when he was building something that they've never been built before because it never rained? This is why we can't hear the, the thoughts of man. We got to listen to the spirit when he's saying, well done, keep going. Well done, keep going. Well done, keep going. I believe that's God speaking to some of y'all this morning. You, you're good. You're doing a good job. Keep going. You're amazing. Keep going. Yeah, you're imperfect, but that's why I sent my son. Amen. So when I look at you, I look at his righteousness. Yeah, right. You have no righteousness of your own. Keep going. Amen. The man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the sky, to every wild animal. But for the man, no helper was found corresponding to him. Now notice how God prophesied he going to do it. But he didn't do it right when he wanted him to do it. See, God is a God of timing. This is why when Lazarus died, Mary and them were tripping. And the Bible says he loved them. But he sat for two days before he went. Why? Because he's a God of timing. His love for you is not going to cause him to move out of the time that's been ordained. Now, he said, I'm going to give you a woman that's corresponding to you, but I need you to go do this. Why? Because God wanted him to establish before she came. Right? Right? They weren't called to build together. They was called to rule together. There has to be vision before there's rule. Amen. 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 This is why in this season it's very, very critical that we watch who we connect with. Amen. How can two walk together unless they agree? We got to analyze. I, I, man, I feel that so strong in my spirit. We got to analyze them connections, man. And, and watch this. We don't analyze from this hill. This hill that messed me up. Mm-mm. Because people tell you, I'm with you. I'm for you. I'm, I'm, we going to do this and we going to do that. And soon as the plot thickens. See, look at you. They came in. Hosea, Hosea. Chapter later. Crucify him, crucify him. Same folk. This is why you know them by their fruit. You got to look at the fruit. You got to look at their posture. That was coming out their mouth. Amen. Watch this. So the Lord called a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs and closed the flesh at that place. Then the Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, this one at last is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman. All right, so God brought the animals to Adam. He named them. He brought the woman to him, too. God didn't call her woman. As a matter of fact, after sin, Adam the one said she will be called Eve. He named her. You don't see the servanthood in that. God didn't create the woman until Adam did the work. That's just like you, you, you get married to a man and, 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 and y'all riding and y'all pull up in front of the big nice house and he got a big old nasty bin sitting in the front and he give you two keys, one to the house and one to the bin. He ain't had to do nothing but receive it. Catch this in the spirit. God did the same thing to us. He came down, did the work. All we got to do is receive. But see, when it comes to the man, a lot of times if a woman ain't, ain't kingdom, she ain't going to see that as being served. She's going to see it as he just want to dictate everything. No. 
I just gave you a house and a car. How is that? I'm going to build it. You just keep it clean. Why I go build something else? I ain't no maid. I don't need to. Ain't nobody say you was a maid, baby. I don't feel like that when I'm out here building these houses. My back be hurting sometimes. And men be the same way. Get a woman. Come on, baby. Let's, let's do something. I mean, you don't want to start no bid. He can't hear God in that because he's not kingdom. God is using her to speak into your life and tell you, let's start a business. But you, man, we straight. We, I got a job. I made $17. You always want to stop kicking against each other, man, and, and, and allow the compatibility of each other's offices and gifts to make the glory of God be instituted in the earth like never before. Ain't nothing like a queen and a king getting together, baby. Woo! Oh, you talking about dangerous. See, that's a power couple right there. When a king and queen get together, that's a power couple. She didn't even have to figure out a name for herself. He did it for her. Look at all what Adam was doing. But a lot of time, women don't see the power they walk in, man. I'm talking about me hurting my heart. I be seeing, I be going through the internet, man, and, and, and queens on that just showing their bodies and just tripping. Men sagging their pants. Shut up, come on, man, gay looking, man. Why y'all, where you get that from? You a king, you a queen, man. We're called to rule together. Yeah. Notice in Genesis 1, he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. So do it. Have dominion. He didn't say have dominion over each other. He said have dominion over the earth. <laughs> See that? For she be called woman, for she was taken from the man. This is why man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife, and they become one flesh. Both the man and woman, they were naked, but knew no shame. Why? Because there was no sin. When sin is present, shame is present. You have no confidence. It's that simple. When you really receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're renewing your mind day by day. Let me help you out with something. We're going to go home. Renewing the mind is a job. Your spirit and your heart, Ezekiel 36 and 26, say, behold, I give you a new heart. I take away the stone and hearts of flesh. I give you a new spirit. I plant my spirit in you. The Holy Spirit testifies with your spirit, calling you a child of God. The spirit of adoption unctions you to cry out, Abba, Father. This is relationship. This is what makes you a son. But if you don't renew your mind in that, you'll continue to walk in shame and guilt. Because now you're sin conscious and not son conscious. And because of this frustration, you'll begin to fight with each other. Because you're frustrated. Because there's shame there. There's guilt. There's, there's, because you're like, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this no more. Look, the way you come out of sin is renewing your mind in the word of God. Simple. Concerning who he is and who you are. I'm going to close with this. John chapter number 17. It says, Jesus was praying. He said, this is eternal life. That they may know you and know the one who you sent. This word know is not just information. Because there's a lot of people with information about Jesus Christ, but they still don't know him. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. To know him is relational. That's right. That's right. So when Jesus defined eternal life, he said, this is eternal life. That you get back in relationship with you and me. Be reconciled to the Father. So you may walk as sons. This is what you got to renew your mind in. Amen. Two principles I want you to take from this, and we finna go. 
son is a title of description. You could take a picture if you don't like to write. Identifying our relationship to God and also our rights as heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Sonship is the heavenly demonstration of the sons of God manifested in the earth. Amen. That's sonship. Amen. That's sonship. And this must be our posture. We're back in relationship with him. That's why I say come bold before the throne of grace. You no longer need a mediator. You can talk to him freely as you want. It's okay to call your pastor because you love your pastor. You want to do that? That's cool. But don't do it because you think your prayers are not being heard. Call him and say, I need you to agree with me because I'm praying on my son. Walk in that authority, ladies and gentlemen. Walk in that authority. Walk in that authority. Walk in it. Walk in that authority. May I hear that in my spirit? Come on, let us stand. I'm, I'm finna speak over your life.